Um, what? Okay, let's go and take a look here, ladies and gentlemen. Um, look over here, guys, this is the identity function. The identity function, we gotta make sure we have everything. So the identity function, so they put their stuff over here. Domain, they put all real numbers, which is perfectly fine, guys. I know in Algebra 2 we're so used to this. I'm just gonna tell you from now on, let's really, really, really get used to using interval notation. Negative infinity to positive infinity. All right, you guys can see this graph keeps on expanding. The range as it goes down to negative infinity, up to, neg up to positive infinity. Okay, the function is odd. The reason why it's odd is it's reflective about the y-axis as well as the x-axis. So when you reflect it twice, you get the exact same graph, so it is odd. And it's also increasing. Think of guys increasing like, a, like you're walking on a roller coaster. As you continue walking on the roller coaster from left to right, you're always going up, right? So the graph is increasing across negative infinity to infinity, and the graph is not bounded. It just continues going down and continues going up, all right? Uh, the next one is, um, again, the domain is gonna be all real numbers. Okay, but we're gonna put negative infinity to infinity. Um, for the range, they say y is less than zero. I think they meant to say y is going to be greater than zero because obviously you have y values that are larger than one. However, zero is included. So you'd have to write it as y is greater than or equal to zero. And again, practicing interval notation, since it's included, we're gonna use a bracket and then it's gonna go up to infinity. So it'd look like that, okay? Uh, and again, there's nothing mathematically wrong with that answer. I'm just gonna tell, I'm preparing you guys for this because when you guys start taking you know, quizzes or tests and you say, hey, put it in interval notation. Or if you see a multiple choice test, the answers are gonna be in interval notation. So you're just gonna wanna make sure you guys are familiar with that. Uh, the graph is even, meaning it's reflective about the y-axis. And it's decreasing. You can see the x values here. It's decreasing from negative infinity to zero. And it's increasing from zero to infinity. And then the graph is also bounded to below. The reason why it's bounded below is because you guys can see that the graph does not go below zero. So it's bounded below, right? Um, the next thing is, I just wanted to I turn that, OK. Um, the next one is going to be the quadratic. On the quadratic, you can see that's all real numbers from negative infinity to infinity. The range is from zero to infinity. Good job. It's reflective about the y-axis, so therefore it is even. And it's decreasing from negative infinity to zero, increasing from zero to infinity, and it is bounded below. So two and three are exactly the same. Good job. All right, moving on to, oh, there's other things I should mention. Whenever we're dealing with these transform, whenever we're dealing with these functions, I think it's really important to kind of know at least one point. That's it, just at least one point, because when you're doing shifting left, right, up, down, I'm not going to be marking you down. Ah, you're, you know, you should have had a little bit better of a stretch. No, but I, if you move that point one unit to the left, I can easily verify you moved it one point to the left. Does that make sense? So even though our sketch, we're gonna be doing sketches, not exact graphs, I do need to see that you apply the transformations, at least the translations correctly. So we wanna know at least a point that we're gonna be translating. Zero comma zero is the most common, but you guys will see as we move on, there's gonna be other points that we're gonna to wanna to work from. So again, this quadratic here, or I'm sorry, this square root function, um, again, that starts at kind of zero, zero. The domain is included zero, but it goes to infinity. The range goes as low as zero, but it goes up to infinity. There is no symmetry of this graph, so it is not even, odd, or neither, so it is neither. It is increasing on all, the whole domain, zero to infinity, and it is bounded below. It continues rising, so it's not bounded above, but it's bounded below. Uh, the cubic function, is also known as kind of like the S curve. Okay, it's kind of like a nice little S. Uh, the domain is from negative infinity to infinity. The range is negative infinity to infinity. All real numbers is fine, but just giving you the interval notation. It is odd if you guys reflect it about the x-axis and then reflect it about the y-axis. You guys see you get the exact same graph, so it is odd. Uh, it is increasing across the whole domain, even though it kind of looks like it gets constant here for a split second, but it's still increasing across the whole domain. And it is not bounded at all. There's no absolute min and there's no absolute max. The next one is the reciprocal function. Oh, and here's your point point, zero comma zero. Now the reciprocal function, the best point to kind of think about would be one comma one. Because just imagine guys, if you were to put one into that function, one divided by one is one, right? So at least you know that this point one is on the graph. Does that kind of make sense? Yes, no? You guys are very quiet, okay. 
So the domain, you guys can see that the graph is continuing, so it's all the way to the left, but as it's getting closer to zero, does it actually touch, get to zero? No, right? And we know from algebra what we did at the beginning of the year, can we have zero in the denominator? No, so our domain is actually gonna look, it's not all real numbers, zero is not a part of the domain. Everything else is good. So it's negative infinity, oops, negative infinity to zero, zero is not included, union, zero, to infinity. So we'll talk more about this later today as well as next chapter, but what we represent that undefined value is, when you have zero in the denominator, we're going to represent that with a asymptote. But actually, I'll use a different color. Okay. The other thing that's important to remember about the reciprocal function is that there's also a horizontal asymptote. If you guys, ex if you guys look at this graph a little bit more in depth, what you'll notice is the graph actually never cross, it never gets to y equals zero either. It's approaching y equals zero from the left and from the right. So the range is the exact same as the domain. Negative infinity to zero, union zero to infinity. Uh, the graph is actually odd. If you reflect the graph about the y-axis and the x-axis, you get the exact same graph. So it actually is odd. The graph is decreasing. So here we gotta be a little bit careful. It's not decreasing from negative infinity to infinity because there's, it's not, it's not doing anything at zero, right? It's undefined at zero. So we gotta make sure we only say it's decreasing from negative infinity to zero, and then it's also decreasing from zero to infinity. Okay, so kinda like the domain, if there's undefined values, we can't throw those in the decreasing, increasing intervals. Uh, boundness, it is boundless. Um, yes, there is no boundness to the problem, it's not bounded. Um, okay, so e to the x. e to the x crosses, as long as there's not an a in this example, e to the x is gonna cross at zero comma one. So that's really helpful. So if you were to shift the graph up, then the new one unit, then the new y-intercept would be zero comma two, right? And you guys can kind of use that as a, as a focal point. The other thing that's important to know about e to the x is again, there's an asymptote here. So the graph actually does not go low below y equals zero. It actually approaches y equals zero. That's helpful when we're talking about the domain, uh, the range, which I'll get into. So first, the domain, yes, negative infinity to infinity. The range, though, only goes down as low as zero to infinity. So it doesn't go down to negative infinity, right? There's negative one is not a part of that graph. And if you guys look at you know your graph, you kind of zoom in or out. It doesn't matter. It's never going to get down to negative one at least with, without transformations. So therefore, the domain is from zero to infinity. It does not have any symmetry, so it is neither. Uh, it does increase, but again, again, walk, walk. It's a roller coaster, walk on there. Far left as you can. As you're walking, do, 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 do. From negative infinity to zero, did you kind of go up? Just a little bit, did you go up? Yes, right, you did. So it's increasing from negative infinity to zero, and then obviously from zero to infinity, it's increasing really fast. That's what we call exponential growth. But it's increasing across the whole domain, always increasing. And if you guys kind of look at that graph and kind of go farther, farther left, you'll see it's very slowly growing, very, very slowly growing. But it is growing. And it is bounded, uh, bounded below because it doesn't go below the uh, x-axis, so it is bounded below. Logarithmic graph is the right idea, but it does have a couple little things here. It's gonna look a little bit more like this, and this crosses at one comma zero. So we wanna make sure we have at least that x axis intercept there, because again, that's the help thing, the transfer transformations, right? We kinda wanna use that point. So let's talk about the domain is from zero to infinity. That is correct, the reason why, there's actually a vertical asymptote right here. It's undefined at zero. All right, we'll talk about logarithms later, but at least for the graphs, you guys should just know there's a vertical asymptote there. So the domain is from zero to infinity. The range is from negative two to infinity. So this group is saying that the graph goes as low as negative two. Can we go lower? Negative three? Negative four? Five? Six? Yeah, we can go all the way down to negative infinity. And we can go up to infinity. There is not any symmetry, so therefore uh, it is neither. Um, it is increasing, but again, there, so it's increasing from zero to negative two. Well, so they're saying it's increasing from zero to negative two. Is the graph increasing from zero to negative two? 
No, the graph is increasing from 0 to infinity. infinity. Exactly. And the graph is not bounded below, because bounded below would mean you can't go as low as a certain value. Well, how low does this graph go? So how high does it go? It's getting, it's getting slower, but it's still going up. So it's actually not bounded. OK? So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is at least the main functions that we're going to be using, as well as how to determine your domain range, even odd, increasing, decreasing, and boundness. OK? So make sure you guys have those. Um, once you guys are now done with that, you guys can uh, go ahead.